Now the last week or so I've been preparing for a demonstration and workshop in the Loveland and Denver area. It's coming up in about a week. And I've got everything pretty much prepared. I've got everything organized for demonstrating uh, a project. And what I'm going to do today is take you through the steps of making a threaded boxwood box, step by step. So uh, hopefully this will help you if you're trying to do such a project. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly what I go through when I make a, a little threaded box. Now I've got a little uh, piece of boxwood. It's about two and a half inches long. And I'm going to make a little box out of this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a tenon or a spigot on each end of that. And I've got some long nose jaws in my Vicmark chuck. Now I have the dimensions of my spigot set on my calipers. I'm going to mark the end of this blank. And I'm going to establish my spigot. Okay, I'm reversing my blank into the chuck. And I'm going to tighten that down and establish the uh, tenon on the other end. Now it's not a bad idea at this time to just true up the outside of this cylinder. Now this area up here is going to be my lid, and that's the first thing that you do. Normally when you do any kind of a box, you start with the lid. So I'm going to just take a pencil and define where I'm going to cut this off. Something that's a really good idea at this point is to mark the grain so we can line that up later in the process. So I'm going to just take a parting tool and cut that off. There we are. Now I normally do as much as I can with my armrest tool in this position rather than move my tool rest. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to make an indentation for my drill, and I'm going to drill a hole. I'm going to turn the lathe speed down a little bit, and I'm going to go to the uh, depth I need. And now I'm going to take my inside tool, and I have videos uh, going into more detail on all these tools and the process. So I'm just going to take my armrest tool and hog out some of this wood. Now I've got a chisel that I formed into a little scraping tool that I'm going to take care of the inside of this and smooth it out. Put a little decoration in the bottom of this. And I'll put a chamfer on there while I got my point tool on the leading edge of where my female threads were, are going to go. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm preparing my lid to chase my female thread. Now I've done some sanding up to 800 grit, and I've spared you that process, but um, it's all ready for a little bit of finish, and I've just got some uh, shellac. These are just shellac flakes mixed up with denatured alcohol. And I'm going to just do a little bit of finishing on the inside. It's a good idea to do this before you do your thread chasing, so you don't mess up your threads. Turn my lathe on, find a, a dry spot on my paper towel, and the inside of the box lid is finished except for chasing the threads. So I'm all ready to chase my threads. I've decided to use my 18 TPI thread chaser. I got this from Hartville Tool for I think it was 82 or 84 dollars. Shipping included. Great place to buy tools. Hartville Tool in Ohio. 
my my hometown, not Hartville, but okay. So I need to lower my tool rest just a little bit. I need to establish a recess back here, which is sometimes called a stop gap, and that simply means that you can run your thread chaser in there and remove it because of that recess. So I've got my Hamlet recess tool. Now I've already established a chamfer on the very front of that. I'm going to go down to chasing speed, which will be right at 300 RPM. I want to start with the second or third tooth, very lightly touch the, uh, the chamfer on there. And I'm going to go back as far as I can with my chaser. Now I've got a thread established on the very beginning of my recess there. And I'm going to start taking my, my tool and swinging it so eventually it's going to be at 90 degrees to my thread. those threads I can tell right now that they're nice and crisp. Now if you need to you can you can tell whether your your threads are pretty much parallel. I've just I've been using an Allen wrench and I just have it in there and I'm just a little bit tapered and I'm gonna do just a little bit more chasing to try to take care of that slight taper in there. I'm going to reduce my lathe speed since I have my threads pretty much established. The box lid is finished. Inside, a little finish on there, threads are done. So I'm going to take this out and put my base in. Okay, now I have the base of my box chucked up into my lathe and I'm getting ready to chase my male threads. Now you can do this at a couple different points and that is hollow out the center. So I'm going to take a square tool, establish a little recess for my drill, Turn your lathe speed down. You don't need to be going too fast here. And it's a really good idea to get pretty close to your bottom so your bottom is not a half an inch thick as I sometimes end up. Now I'm going to save the hollowing for a little bit later. So I've got my hole established which is all ready to go. I'm going to take a point tool and establish my tenon on there. And I have a video on joining male and female threads, so you can look at that for more detail. I'm going to show you the way I do it. Take my point tool. Now what I do is I look at my thickness of my wall right here. And that's how far I need to go down on the, on the male counterpart for this. One more try, and I'm, I'm right there, I'm right where I need to be. So with my point tool, I'm going to start establishing a little recess at the back of my thread. I'm going to establish a chamfer on the front. And again, I'm using my 18 TPI thread chaser, and I'm going to start chasing my thread. Now I'm ready to chase my male thread. And I've got my camera repositioned. I'm going to try to stay out of the way so you can actually see this. I'm going to start with uh, my tool at about 45 degrees 
I got my tool rest set at the right height, the right distance from my work. So I'm going to go to chasing speed, which uh, let's start, I'm going to start this a little slower because I had this shoulder to contend with and I'm um, at three, 285, 285. So um, just like the female thread, I'm going to just make a very light pass. And I'm going to just start establishing my thread on there, on the chamfer. I need to adjust my tool rest a little higher. As you can see, as I establish that groove in there, my chaser is just doing its own thing. It's, it's following along there. I'm cutting a real nice thread. Got some good shavings going on, but just see where I'm at here. And I've just, just started to establish a connection. So I'm going to continue around the corner with my thread. It doesn't take long to get your chaser at 90 degrees to the work. That hopefully will establish uh, a male spigot or tenon with parallel sides. Let's just put that back up there. And I'm good. Now, what I have here, I've got my mark for my grain. There's the lid, and there's the one on the base, and I just have a little bit of um, fine tuning on that. So I'm going to take my point tool and just take a little bit off that shoulder. I'm going to put a little detail right here where my connection will be. Getting closer. As you can see, I'm very close on that. I just have a little ways to go. And we'll see where we're at. I'm very happy with those threads. Boxwood chases threads very, very nicely. So there we are. And after I complete the lid, uh, that'll tighten up just a little bit. So the next step is to complete my lid on the outside. Um, one thing I'm going to check, I check my thickness with my finger calipers. And I'm using my quarter inch spindle gouge for this. Now I've got the lid of my box and my base pretty much formed to where I want the uh, outside shape to be. I'm just taking my point tool and doing a little fine tuning on the lid. And this is a good tool to do this with. You're not taking off a lot of material. You get a pretty clean cut, even though it's a scraping tool. And I'm coming around the, the top of my lid and just drawing that back, making sure my point does not contact the wood. Now I'm ready to hollow out the inside of my base and I've got quite a bit of wood to take off so I'm going to use this uh, spindle gouge which has been reground with a very long left wing and that'll, that'll allow me to scrape out the inside of this. Ordinarily I try to do that with my armrest tool but I have a little bit too much wood to take out so um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up to my, uh, my male threads. A little bit more depth. Now I'm taking a traditional scraper and I'm going to just clean up the inside of my base. Try to take very light cuts, I'm getting some nice shavings.
making sure that little nib is out of the bottom of the box. Okay, I like that. I'm going to do a little sanding. I'm going to put a little decoration at the very bottom of this with my point tool. And a little finish, and we'll be finished. Now here is my box completed. When I completed the top of the box, I simply screwed it onto the base when it was still in the chuck and finished the top. And I did a little bit of chatter work on that, put some finish on it. Now the base is a little bit different. What I usually do is I take a scrap piece of wood. In this case, it's a little piece of box wood. I've turned some female threads and that's going to be a temporary chuck for my base of my box. So I'm just saving a little bit of time and I'm kind of explaining how that works. Uh, I've completed the bottom, I've sanded it, put some finish on it, and I hope this helps in the process of making a threaded box. Thanks.